a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. There are a couple of new interesting ETFs that we're going to talk about with our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, who joins me here. But first, we have to mention the fact that uh, even though the ETF industry continues to grow, it's growing at a little slower pace these days. Yes, uh, you know, because of all these trade concerns and maybe the industry is maturing also a little bit. So this year, in the first six months, uh, U.S. ETF industry took in $123 billion of new cash, mm -hmm. uh, which is down 50%, almost 50% from the same period last year. And as I mentioned, that could be due to trade concerns and tariffs and everything. But product launches haven't slowed down. Uh, 145 ETFs have launched this year so far, which is 20 more than 125 which launched in the same period last year. See, that's interesting. That's interesting. More product, but More. less money coming yes, in. Yes, exactly. So ETF providers are, you know, they, they, they are still very uh, enthusiastic about the growth in the industry, but maybe we will see more inflows in the later half of the year if trade war concerns subside, we will yeah. see. And another thing which we have seen over the past few years is that uh, new ETFs are getting more specialized, more mm, niche. Targeted, yeah. Yeah, because as we have discussed in the past, it's very hard for newer entrants to compete with more established players, so they try to do something different. Uh, but we haven't seen a lot of crazy ETFs this year. No, not yet, anyway. <laughs> like we used to see something like whiskey ETF, yeah. uh, maybe ETF providers were then just trying to see, let's see what would work. Yeah. And whiskey ETF did not work, it closed down. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, the SEC has also become more careful in approving products, that's why we haven't yet seen a block, uh, Bitcoin ETF so mm -hmm. far. Yep. So today, so yeah. does so does it necessarily mean that ETF cash outflows are up? Does that have anything to do with the uh, uh, outflows are a little bit higher uh, than previous years? But uh, again, uh, uh, these are the net inflows that we talked about. The industry yep. is still gathering new cash, but just at a slower, slower rate. pace. Yes. All right, and it's summertime, and that doesn't help either. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, still investors love passively managed exchange-traded products over actively managed mutual funds, which are much more expensive. And uh, some of the recent surveys have shown that millennials really love ETFs. So the outlook for industry remains strong. Millennial investors love to invest in ETFs, use ETFs in their portfolios. Okay. But we have just seen a little bit of... Um, you know, uh, decline in the pace. All right. So the first new one that we're going to look at here is the Goldman Sachs Just U.S. Large Cap ETF. So we have seen a lot of interest in ESG-focused ETFs of late, ETFs that, uh, you know, select companies on the basis of environmental, social, and governance themes. So this is an ETF launched by Goldman Sachs, and it uses the index provided by Paul Tudor Jones, just capital okay. and it invests in large cap u.s companies that display just behavior and that just behavior is assessed on the basis of how they treat their employees that carries a big weight how they treat their customers how they treat environment their communities their shareholders their products everything uh, so if you want to learn more about the CTF, you can go to the code page on zax.com. It charges an expense ratio of 20 basis points, which is very reasonable for an ESG-focused product. And it has already gathered a lot of assets, uh, 263 million in assets so far, which is pretty good, considering that it was launched uh, on 7th June, just a little more than a month back. But mm -hmm. a lot of those assets could also be from Goldman Goldman Sachs uh, institutional clients. Now, if you want to look at holdings and the portfolio, you can go to the external homepage, Goldman Sachs website for this ETF, and you can look at top, top holdings. Uh, so, not surprisingly, 
tech companies have a big weight in the portfolio. Uh, more than 27% uh, of assets weight are assigned to information technology sectors because we know that at least they treat their employees well. Just, right? <laughs> yes. That's why just is the tip. <laughs> yes, in terms of um, salaries, uh, tech companies are good, and products also. So that is why you can see Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, these are the top holdings in the portfolio. Uh, and uh, being a, a pretty diversified ETF, it has uh, 429 holdings. So pretty diversified in terms of single company risks too. Yeah, so it doesn't mean though that companies not in this ETF treat everybody unjustly. We want to clarify <laughs> that, right? <laughs> yes, they just have lower scores than these which find a place in the portfolio. All right, I always have to throw the monkey <laughs> wrench into everything. Mm. Then the, a new one recently launched also is ProShares Online Retail ETF. So online retail is in a space which has seen tremendous growth yeah. over the past few years. Uh, we know that Americans are now spending more thanks to tax cuts and tightening labor market and rise in wages and stock market has been doing well so that also you know boosts investors confidence consumer confidence but a lot of shopping is now being done online mm -hmm. and this is not only in the US it's a global growth story and except for maybe China where uh, you know the percentage of online shopping to total uh, retail sales is pretty high but in other countries it's low. Uh, in the U.S., uh, online sales are just about 10 percent of total sales, which is which is surprising. So there is a lot of growth potential. That is why the ETF is pretty interesting. There is another ETF in the space uh, which uh, launched about uh, a little more than two years back. It's called iBuy. I buy. <laughs> mm. And it has done very well. It is up more than 100 percent over the past little more than two years since its inception. So that, that makes this ETF pretty interesting. But what is different between iBuy and this online retail ETF is that iBuy is equally weighted. I see. This is market cap weighted, so it has more focus on the giants in this space, like big companies like Amazon and Alibaba. Sure. So uh, you can again go to the code page to look at other detailed details. Uh, it has an expense ratio of 58 basis points, so it is uh, cheaper than iBuy, which charges 65 basis points. And then you can go to the external home page, brochures website for this ETF and look at the holdings and other details. And as I mentioned, being market cap weighted, it has a lot of focus on Amazon and Alibaba, these are the top holdings in the in the uh, in the ETF, accounting for more than uh, almost 40 percent of the ETF's weight. Now, this uh, launched on 13th of July, so this is really new, mm -hmm. and it has not been so far. It has gathered just. 4 million in assets under management. Uh, uh, so investors who are interested in this ETF should realize that it will have higher trading costs, uh, maybe a wider bid ask spread because it had just started trading. But underlying companies are, are very liquid, so liquidity is not a concern, but they may like to use uh, limit orders if they are interested in this ETF or wait for some time till it gathers some more assets, like I recommend in case of most new ETFs. Sure. Do you own either one? I do not own either of these. I do own iBuy and the ETF investor portfolio that I manage oh. for our clients. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Don't forget, more ETF information is on our website, zax.com, in the ETF section. So use the Funds tab in the top toolbar on the home page to get directed to that section. And also don't forget, visit the podcast page where you'll see Nina's ETF podcast listed, and she's already had a few installments put up uh, in the e, uh, podcast section of Zax.com, so you can go there and get additional ETF information, things uh, discussed that you might not uh, see or hear discussed uh, on the website elsewhere. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.